Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a website, go to squarespace.com slash jamesbruton for 10% off. I love making walking robots. I've made a robot that walks on two legs called Robot X that you can check out on my channel and also Open Dog that walks on four legs when I've made it work. Now Open Dog's still definitely an ongoing project. A lot of work's gone into that. Check out the 13 videos that are already up in my channel. I'm waiting for some parts to arrive at the moment including metal upgraded pulleys. I've got a little lathe now to make some metal upgraded parts as well and I'm also waiting for some updates to the O drive which is the motor driver to that firmware so that I can cut down all the Arduino electronics and put in one teensy which is a much higher power processor that should run everything. So this robot is very rigid, everything's driven by ball screws and we've got an inverse kinematic model so we can place the feet in XYZ space and it works out what to do with all of the 12 motors in there and there's a big explanation in some of the videos in my channel. But a lot of people have asked me about what about making a more organic robot with bendy tendons and some flex in the joints and that's obviously quite a lot harder to do because to build that into the mathematical model is pretty hard unless we cheat completely. So today we're going to do experiments with another type of robot leg that basically has a flexible tendon in between the motor and the actual joint. So we're going to make this basic leg design out of aluminium extrusion and 3D printed parts. And the plan is going to be that we've got this parallel link so that we've only got really one motor in here. We haven't for now got separate hip and knee joints um, and that just keeps everything in line and that means we can just have one motor. So we're going to have a motor with a pulley at the back. That's going to pull up a big pulley here with a flexible tendon. We're going to measure the position of the joints, which of course are all the same. And then we can work out what the difference is between where we think the motor should be and where the actual joint is, and we can calculate the force applied to the joint. So there's my main leg assembly which uh, looks pretty good, it looks pretty rigid and I've got one of Open Dog's spare feet on there just so I'm not smashing my table with a piece of aluminium. I've got bearings in the top and bottom and 8mm studding and everything's done up with T-nuts onto the 2020. So now we need to put this piece on the back here which makes a pulley that pulls around that sort of knee and obviously the middle of this is actually the middle of this joint and a motor higher up on the back that's going to pull that tendon to hopefully pull it up and we're going to see if we can make it actually jump. Right, I've got this pivot now that holds the top of the leg so that it doesn't fall over sideways and we can test it and if it jumps a little bit, hopefully it'll come down, it won't fall over. It's attached to a not very good table that's really wobbly so we might have to sort that out but it'll do for initial testing. Right, let's talk about the pulley that's going to pull the tendon. So what we're going to do is actually use the body of the motor and of course with a brushless motor with an outrun of the body spins and the front stays still and the spindle spins. So we're going to put the encoder on there so we can measure the motor position. And then the pulley is going to fit around the motor body and then we're going to stick another bearing on the back with the extra attachment that comes with the motor so we can support it. Now I've left a little gap in there, you'll notice this is quite loose and that's so we can get some rubber matting in to stop this slipping against the motor body. And I've got some places on here where we can tighten it up. So I've got my motor fitted, which is a brushless motor, and it's mounted on a bearing at this end and the motor bearing at this end, so it's lovely and strong. And we've got an encoder fitted on there as well. So this will actually allow us using the O-Drive to run the motor at a specific velocity and in a specific direction, and also to a specific position. So we still need to wire that into the O-Drive. And we've also got a feedback pot here, which will measure the actual leg position. So of course we're going to have a stretchy tendon around this pulley and then we'll be able to see what the result is on the actual leg position. So we should be able to apply a different amount of force to the tendon and see what the result is on the actual leg. So the stick that supports my leg's got an O-Drive on it and an Arduino Mega. 
So the O-Drive is connected to the encoder, which is attached to the motor, it's attached to the brushless motor, and it's attached to power, and it's got serial in there from the Arduino so that we can send commands to it. And this is going to very accurately position that motor. The encoder has 8,192 counts per revolution, so pretty much more accurate than a stepper motor, and obviously it's massively powerful, and we can run it really fast. It's a 48 volt O drive, but we're only running on 24 volts at the moment. The Arduino, of course, is connected to USB, so I can send commands down the serial terminal, and I've also connected it to the pot there, so we can read the analog in and read that pot position. So the motor's powered up, and if we turn that, you can see it's actually holding its position and trying to turn back, and there's quite a lot of power there. I've limited it to 40 amps, uh, but that should be more than enough for our purposes. And we can also make some quite agile moves with the motor. So we've got a nylon cord tied around the pulley now to this green cord, which is actually a stretchy bungee cord. Um, and then that allows us to pull up the tendon, hopefully. So if I actually go and position the motor now, we can see that we've got quite a nice fast movement on there. Um, however, if I take the stick out that's holding it up and actually push on this, unfortunately we can see the motor drives backwards, uh, which isn't very good because we really need it to be able to hold it. So we're going to need a different pulley solution that's probably on the actual output shaft of the motor and is much smaller. So I've made an extension to this end of the motor, which is the back, it's the other end to the encoder. And I've got bolts that run all the way through that 3D print into the motor body. So I've got a spacer, I'm going to stick a washer on there. And then we're going to put the bearing on. So we're basically going to offset this whole motor with new brackets on the ends so that this thing runs in the middle. So you can see now I've got the string wrapped around the pulley and the tendon as it was before. So uh, the motor's now holding. I can actually push, push this. It does back drive the motor a little bit. But on the whole, it's actually the uh, green bungee stretching there. So let's just change the position of that motor to unwind the tendon. And we should be able to make the leg crouch right down. And if we pull it up again, yep, doesn't quite jump, but it's not too bad. And it's good enough for testing. So I really wanted to see the robot leg jump. So what I've actually done is move the pivot point so it's in the middle here. And now we've got a, a dumbbell weight basically on the other end there to uh, counterweight it so that we can get a little jump out of it. So we're going to slowly bring the leg down using a slow motor speed. So it should crouch down and then we're going to speed it up and we're going to make it jump. So we've got a little jump there, not too bad, but good enough for our purposes. And you'll notice as it came down, it actually compressed slightly, which is really good. So obviously we've only got one motor in this that lifts the whole leg up and there's no robot on top and it's counterbalanced. So the gear ratio that we've got effectively with that pulley to the big pulley could be a lot better. Now, believe it or not, Open Dog can actually jump and clear the ground. I've only done it once by accident when I took the legs from their crouched position to their full extended position at full motor speed. And of course, there's two motors on here driven with ball screws. So the torque and the force that we get is um, a lot better. Um, it's not great at landing, though, so I'm not going to demo it again, mainly because the legs are rigid and it's a different type of robot. So this looks like it could be quite good at jumping. If we got that gear ratio right, at the moment we'll stick with the counterweight. But now we can do some more clever stuff by looking at the actual position of the leg compared to where the motor position is. So we put a feedback pot on here so we can measure the actual leg position. So I've now put that into the code so it gets red and um, we can do a plot there. So if I take the wood out, we can um, see that we've got a lovely graph there on the screen that shows us the actual leg position. So that's pretty good and we can use that to work out the force applied to the leg because essentially if the motor were holding this in position and I was pushing this to compress the leg then that would be measuring the amount of stretch in the bungee and we can do that for any leg position so we can measure the difference between where the motor thinks the leg should be and the actual force that's applied and then we can start doing things in terms of force. So when we pull the leg up to jump we're actually applying an amount of force that's required to get the leg to go from one position to another. So what I've now done is actually use this pot position so that the motor tracks the pot position. So if I now push on here, uh, you should be able to see the motor unwinding. So the motor's still got holding power. If I let go of it, it should stay there. It's not so good in between, but basically you should be able to see that motor tracking the actual leg position. So all we've done is basically scaled the pot and made sure that the motor tracks it. There's no fancy PID controller, we could get a better response. But essentially that now means it's compliant, which is quite good for absorbing a load. So if I now put that back into normal mode, you can see now if I push it, obviously the motor doesn't comply anymore. It does back drive a little bit, but most of it is the springy leg back to how it was. And this is very useful because we can use that to absorb load when we jump.
So now we're going to make the leg jump and as soon as it's jumped we're going to put it into compliant mode. So to start with we're going to apply a force to the leg between the pot and the motor so that it goes up and it jumps up. Then we'll put it into compliant mode and it should absorb the load when it lands. Well, that kind of works. You can see the leg is slightly bent now, whereas uh, when we did it last time, it pulled back up again. And if I take it out of compliant mode, we should see it recover to its upright position. So I'm just going to do that again, but I've got less of a constrain when it takes the load and it comes down again, then it should hopefully crouch down even further. So my test rig's not very good, this table's really wobbly, I did put some more weight with a dumbbell on the back of there to stop it tipping over, but I'm pretty happy with that testing. And hopefully you can see what's happening of course is, because we've got that compliance with the flexible tendon, that takes the load to start with, and that allows us to then measure the force essentially on the leg, and make the motor comply with it so it's more organic. If it were a rigid leg of course, we can't really do that because there's no compliance in the first place. So with Open Dog, with the ball screws, unless we put extra flexibility in there, it's very hard to work out whether there's force. We can have foot sensors and things, but we can't have the natural spring in the tendon and then measure the compliance and make the motors comply with it. What I'd also like to do, of course, is have a much better leg than this that can actually lift itself up to take steps. At the moment, we can only apply force in one direction, but I think the example kind of proves what I'm trying to set out to do. So why don't we just put some compliance sections into Open Dog? Perhaps those rods with rose joints on that push across the joint from the ball screw to the rest of the joint and that's how the joints move. Well Open Dog is a very traditional robot, as I said at the beginning it has an inverse kinematic model and that means we can position the feet in X, Y and Z space in straight lines essentially, in straight line coordinates and it works out what to do with all of the 12 motors using trigonometry and I covered this in the build series quite heavily. So if we were to make those pieces compress those basically form one side of the triangle in the trigonometry. So we'd have to measure that compression, then we'd have to put that back into the model, otherwise all the maths would be wrong. So in order to do that quick enough for it to move dynamically, we'd have to have very, very fast processing, probably running at an estimated 1000 hertz, recalculating 1000 times a second, instead of maybe 100 or 50. So that makes it very difficult for the traditional robot to have compliant joints. With this sort of robot leg though, we're cheating, as I said at the beginning, so what you probably do is just smash the leg into the ground, measure the position where it is, you let it comply, measure the position you've got, and then work out the forward kinematics, because then you already know the angles and you can work out where the foot is, and then roughly estimate the force you need for any future motions of where you put the other legs and so on. So it's not quite the same traditional model, it's a bit more organic, but it's probably more how animals and humans move. When you're moving and you're walking, you're basically feeling with your feet and feeling where you're putting your legs, and then roughly working out where to take the next step. So it's a completely different model. Now I'm not going to tear Open Dog apart and rebuild it. If I were going to build it with that model, it would need really a different mechanical assembly and all of the maths would be wrong. So if I do build a robot like this, which I'm not planning to right now, then it will be a completely different machine. What I'd like to do is build a three-legged robot like a tripod and try and make it move with organic compliant joints. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace can provide websites, domains and online shops. Don't forget to use the link in the description to this video to get 10% off. That's squarespace.com slash James Bruton. Alright, that's all for now.